Although it is ideal to use classes instead of inline styles, we do end up using them under some circumstance. So in this video, I'll show you how to bind to inline styles in Vue.js. Now there are two ways to bind to the style attribute. The first one is the object syntax, and the second one is the array syntax. Let's take a look at object syntax first with an example. Now as the name suggests, with the object syntax, we bind the style attribute with a JavaScript object. So let's say we have an h1 tag, and to this h1 tag, we have some inner HTML that says inline. Now let's say we need to bind a color to this element. So for that, let's declare a new data property and assign a value. Now I'm gonna call this highlight color, and let's give it a color of orange. Now to bind this color to our h1 tag, we are first going to use the vbind directive, followed by the attribute, which is the style attribute. And then to the style attribute, we assign a JavaScript object. Now this object will have name value pairs. The name will be the CSS property, so color. And then the value will be the data property that we have declared, so highlight color. So basically at runtime, highlight color, which is nothing but orange, will be bound to the color property of the style attribute. So let's save this and refresh our browser. And you can see that the heading tag is now in orange color. And if you have a look, each one has an inline style color set to orange. Let's add another property. And this time let's add the font size. So I'm gonna put a comma and say header size and set this to 50. Now to bind this header size to our h1 element, I'm gonna add a comma, and over here, I'm gonna say font size, put a colon, and then the data property that we have declared, so header size. And of course, you need to append pixels as the unit, so plus pixels. So let's save this and refresh our browser and take a look. Well, something has gone wrong because we can't see any HTML at all. And if you're wondering why, let me point out the culprit. If you take a look at the style binding, we have specified font hyphen size. However, JavaScript variables cannot accept a hyphen. So kebab casing does not work. Now to overcome this, there are two options. The first one is to enclose font size within single quotes. So now you can save this, refresh the browser, and it's going to work because in the inline style, it says font size 50 pixels. Or the second option is to change kebab casing to camel casing. So you can replace font hyphen size with font size with an uppercase S. So kebab casing to camel casing. So let's save this and refresh. And you can see that it still works. The font size of 50 pixels is applied along with the color orange to this heading tag. Also, keep in mind you can specify static values as well. For example, if you know for a fact that this element must have a padding of let's say 20 pixels, you can just add it directly. Not all values have to be dynamic. So I can put a comma, padding, and then colon, and then set it to 20 pixels. Now if I save this and refresh the browser, you can see that a padding of 20 pixels has been added or applied to this heading tag. So you can bind dynamic values as well as static values. Now binding styles this way works just fine, but as the number of properties increases, the template becomes cluttered. For example, if there were 10 additional properties, your template would probably not look clean at all. So, to make things cleaner or to provide for a cleaner template, Vue allows us to directly bind a style object. So let's take a look at an example and understand what this style object is. So in the data property, we create another name value pair. Let the name be header style object. And the value will be an object that in turn contains CSS properties as name value pairs. 
So let's recreate this same H1 element styles so that you can compare the two approaches and see how clean the template looks with the style object approach. Color is going to be orange. Font size is going to be 50 pixels. And then a padding of 20 pixels. Let's create a new H1 element. Now to bind this style object, we are going to use the vbind directive again. And we are going to use the style attribute again. But this time, instead of binding an object, we directly bind to this header style object. So I'm going to paste this over here. And I'm going to name this style object. So let's save this, go back over here and refresh our browser. And you can see that we have created the style object. And if you notice the inline styles, both of them have the exact same inline styles. But if we go back to the code, you can clearly see that the second HTML element is much easier to read than the first one. So my advice would be, if you have a single inline property, you can go with the first approach. But if you have multiple inline style properties, definitely go with the style object approach. Gather all your CSS properties, create a JavaScript object out of it, and then bind the JavaScript object directly to the style attribute. So much more cleaner and readable code can be created using the style object. Well, this is about the object syntax for applying inline styles to HTML elements. Let's take a look at the array syntax in the next video.